And we're live. Thanks for joining again. Um, today, I'm not going to do what I was the past uh, uh, sessions, or I'm not continuing with it. I'm going to start with something new because I don't want to spend another, well, one and a half hours or even more figuring out, figuring out why my swap wasn't working. So if you followed me along, uh, you know, for the past couple of sessions, I've been trying to deploy uh, an app service using a deployment slot, doing a swap with a warm up, and it failed for some reason. So I'm in the process of gathering some information and creating a support ticket for this because I'm stuck and I don't know what to do anymore. So in order not to bore you with this, I'm going to do this offline and do something else today. But first, how are you doing? Uh, for me, it's been a been a busy week. Um, I've I've been well busy coding, busy busy well reading and and family. So uh, so I'm eager to know how are you doing. Uh, in the meantime, uh, let me just show you what I've been doing uh, uh, before before uh, the session. So. Uh, uh, as you can see, I have a green deployment at the moment, so this is good, and it's still the the pipeline still has the swap inside it. Uh, the main difference is I've removed the warm up endpoints uh, from the ARM template. So if you see in VS Code, uh, no, the other codes over here uh, in the app settings, I don't have the web. Uh, warm-up uh, configuration environment uh, settings anymore and after uh, removing them uh, everything worked out uh, fine the deployment was green uh, so everything is uh, is working again without the warm-up uh, this is just to to get coding again do some stuff uh, and if I if I'm committing well code today it will be deployed immediately to the app services so uh, apparently you haven't done anything so uh, I'll, I'll just uh, uh, start uh, start coding start configuring and start what I want to do today and uh, thank you uh, Wouter uh, for, for the follow uh, it's nice so if you uh, watch this later on or jump in during the session thanks and otherwise, uh, you can uh, check it out on my YouTube channel, where I will post the recording of the session. So what I want to uh, accomplish today, or what I want to do uh, on the long, longer run. So what I want to do is put my app services inside a virtual network. And well, only have one app service publicly available and the others in a VNet. Uh, and the one app service is able to connect to the backend uh, app services, uh, just no one else. So that's what I want to do in the long run. Also doing this via ARM templates, continuous deployment, yada, yada, yada. Uh, but as I haven't got any experience with this stuff, only from reading the documentation sites a bit, it's not much reading what I did, it's more like scanning the, the words. Uh, so I want to try it out using the UI, using the portal first and see what will happen, uh, how far it will come. So I've read something, you have to create a VNet uh, as your virtual network. Uh, you can connect or integrate your app services with them and having service endpoints in order to have other services connect to them. So. A lot of new words for me, like VNet or, well, new words, they're not new, it's just I don't know how they work or not how to configure them properly. Um, so let's follow along and uh, see uh, what will happen. So I, I've Beforehand, I, I did some searching on the matter, and what I found out, or found out, 
well, the Azure version network documentation site, it has some, some uh, concepts, so the address space, so you can use the, the 10.0 <laughs> address space with, with, a, with a, what's this called? The 16 slash 16. I know what it stands for, just not what it's called. Uh, but uh, subnets, it's uh, a fee net is region specific, a uh, fee net is coped to a subscription. Okay, makes sense. Best practices, non overlapping. So if you're connecting your fee net with your on premises network, it might be a good idea not to have overlapping IP addresses because this will, well, uh, <laughs> mess things up later on. Subnets should not cover the entire address space. Well, uh, make your subnet big enough so your services can grow, can scale in the future. So plan ahead. That's what, what they're saying. It's recommended to have fewer large VNets instead of smaller VNets. So this was quite surprising to me, or at least I didn't ex expect this. So it makes sense, like, like they're saying, this will prevent management overhead. And that's true, because having only one or two or three VNets with everything inside them, you only have to manage one, two or three VNets. But I had expected the best practice would be to create multiple small VNets, each containing their own, well, functional domain uh, or technical domain and having multiple of them. So you have a lot of management, but if someone gets inside one of these small VNets, they're well stuck over there instead of having access to everything. So this is something I don't understand. Well, from a management perspective, I do. Uh, from a security perspective, I don't. Maybe you know. Uh, I'd, I'd love to know uh, if, if, well, this makes sense from uh, a non-management perspective. So from the management perspective, I understand this. So and secure your VNets by adding NSGs. So I've read something about NSGs also. It's like, well, it's like a firewall or at least that's from my dev perspective, it's, I, I compare them to firewalls. So you can put ports open and having some access rules uh, on them, on these security groups, stuff like this. So this is stuff I quite understand. I'm not a network administrator or system administrator. So my, my knowledge level is somewhere over here where from an actual administrator, it would probably be somewhere over here. So bear with me. So communicate with the internet. So you can communicate to the outside if you're inside the VNet. And if someone wants to connect to you, you have to well put ports open uh, through uh, service endpoints. So that's what I mentioned. I have to create service endpoints in order for outside services to connect to my services, which are inside the VNet. Um, well, through uh, other VNets with VNet pairing, I guess. I've read something about it. Oh, that's over here. So you can connect multiple VNets with each other. Makes sense. They make some kind of a tunnel. I think it's, it's quite similar to a VPN. So you create a secure tunnel between the VNets, or at least that's how I imagine it. You can deploy VMs, Azure Resource, blah, blah, blah. Okay, stuff inside. Yeah, if you're inside the VNet, you can connect with other services inside it. With on-premises, I won't be doing this. Filter network traffic, <coughs> traffic with security groups. Network virtual appliances. So these are the probably the, the Windows Azure firewalls, the actual heavy heavy duty stuff. 
route network traffic well that's too advanced for me i've used routing tables back in the day like 20 years ago if if not more and and modify routes to which my network well uh, traffic was was going through but that's too advanced for me or at least it isn't at the moment border gateway protocol I haven't got a clue what this means well it's it says over here but I don't think I need this to know this at the moment <coughs> network integration for Azure services so this is interesting because I want to integrate my app services or have my app services inside the vnet and have some other app service connect to them uh, i was wondering if i could use private link uh, what is private link it's like kind of a well uh, secure tunnel with your with your vnet so this is a nice picture so you have some zones you have some services inside a vnet and a private endpoint where you can connect to but the availability it's for well i want to use for app services and it's in preview in the united states and i don't feel like deploying stuff to the united states at the moment because i just want to play with it with my existing services uh, so i think I will do a follow-up session using private link and connect to key vault because I think key vault is GA and well every every good solution needs key vault uh, nowadays so I will deploy it uh, in some future session and connect to it or at least I hope I will connect to it using private link but the prerequisite is having an actual vnet so that's not what I will be doing today. Uh, service endpoints. I will create a service endpoint sometime in the future. I don't think I will do it today because, well, that will probably take too much time, or at least for, for me to figure out. I think, or I hope to accomplish to create a VNet inside my my resource group uh, for the, the secure apis if you followed along and i hope to integrate those app services in the vnet using the portal and if i can do this super fast i might try out some some arm templates uh to do the actual deployment via arm templates but that's probably something which we'll have to wait to tomorrow. So it's free, so that's good. Uh, you do need uh, for AppServes a uh, standard machine or higher in order to integrate with apps, uh, with VNets. And if you're using AppService environments, well, you're already in a VNet, so there's no need. And now let me see. So there's a quick start over here. Quick start for your network the portal. And I'll just, uh, well, follow the steps. So create a virtual network. So this is next, next, finish stuff. A name, resource group, address space. So this looks okay. Add a subnet. Or subnet uh, next next yes so okay create virtual machines that's not something I need to do at the moment because I want to integrate app services but what this tutorial is doing it's well uh, creating multiple VMs and make sure they can connect to each other like doing a ping so that's nice and all but not something I'm going for. So I have Chrome started up. So if you saw me last session, I had some issues with Firefox and the Azure Blades. 
so I decided to use Chrome for my, my live coding sessions in order to, well, to, to fix the issue. I don't have Edgium yet because I don't know. So this is my uh, the, the, the resource group where we're in. And I'm going to create a, a VNet for this. So everything is prefixed with yanfei-secureapi. Aside from this, secure API form. So that's a strange naming convention. Might need to fix this form. So why is this prefixed? That's... I've probably overlooked this, so hmm. won't be fixing this today because this will probably also affect my managed identities, and I've allowed my managed identity. I've granted my managed identities some roles to specific app registrations, and if I well change the server form so change the actual machine the apps are located on i will probably get a new identity for each of those app services again and that will mean i need to well grant them roles again also so i won't be doing this today so but i uh i'll, I'll write it up clean up tasks so uh, the server farm three um main instance main needs a prefix fx managed identities and roles. So I need to fix this. Probably want to script it. So I can do this uh, automated later on. Uh, so back to Chrome. There we are. So add a virtual network. So this shouldn't be too hard. Hopefully. Uh, yes, I want to have this in this resource group. Um, Europe, Western Europe. So, and according to my convention, let's use this convention. Um, web network. Yeah, does this make... Um, or let's call it backend network because I want to add all of my backend services to this network. Um, so at the moment, if you paid attention, I have um, this Jan V Secure API conferences and speakers web applications which are my backend app services and I have this one which is my front-end app service and now that I look at it I think we might stumble into some trouble because they're all located in the same instance the same app service plan so if I add these two the conferences and the and the speaker's app service to a VNet. I wonder what will happen to, to this one. If, if it's allowed or not, or if everything in, in the secure API farm will be added to the VNet. I don't know, because I have never worked with this stuff before. So I will figure this out as we go. 
So next IP addresses, which so that yeah, the name, so it's for my backend network. IP addresses, so 10.0.0, so make it uh, the sample has, the, the sample, the documentation has one, so let's make it consistent with the sample in order to, well, make sure nothing will go awry. So uh, also 16, yes, so in a subnet, they had a subnet with 24, so that's what we're going to do also. Um, yeah. So, what was the convention? Backend uh, app subnet. Mm. Yeah, so I can have one big pnet for my backend services and have multiple subnets. So I I don't know if that's best practice. If you know, please put it in the chat. So I think I'll be creating a subnet for my app services. So my backend app services and a subnet for my Azure services like Key Vault, like storage accounts, like whatever. And then, well, I might be able to add multiple subnets, but I'll go with this one now. So that should be 10.1.1.0. With the 24. So this means I have like, oh, it also tells me it has like 250 address spaces uh, available because the slash 24 means the first three uh, the first three numbers of my IP4 network uh, address are uh, the is the subnet or the yeah the subnet mask, and I can only use the fourth digit. So I can only also make it 25, which will make it even less because uh, yeah I, I've I've learned this stuff. In in uh, well, what was it? Was it called in high school? Or well, I think it's called high school. So note that. <laughs> so an IP address in well, let's make it in black. So mine. So an IP address is like uh, one dot one dot one dot one. So this is uh, uh, this is like eight bytes. One, two, three, four, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, dot, seven, eight, eight. So this is what 1.1.1.1 IP address looks like when you convert it to actual bits. So it's like four bytes. Um, so if you say slash 24, it will skip the first 24 characters, the first 24 bits, which is 8, 16, 24. So you can use all of these bits for the address space. And this is the stuff I still remember from, from networking class, <coughs> which was quite interesting. But I. I haven't used it much later on because you could choose if you want to go full on networking or full on dev and I chose the dev part. So this also means if I make the 24 25 I can only use these uh, these numbers and if I make it 26 I can only make it well, use these and the same goes if I make 23 I can well do even more address spaces so it's it's fun and to play with this and there are probably network administrators who are very keen on creating the most optimal optimal subnets I'm not so 
I'll, I'll suffice with the slash 24 because it's easy to well, use all of these bytes or all, all of these bits for closing. Service endpoints allow traffic to specific Azure resources from your virtual network. I don't have any yet. Whoa! Oh, uh, you can choose. Oh, that's cool. Create service endpoint policies to allow traffic to specific Azure resources. I don't think I will select it now because I will probably add them later on. Yeah, we'll probably add them later on. So add, so this is the address space. I have a subnet. So you add service endpoints to the subnet. That's good to know. DDoS protection firewall. Yeah, the firewall is really cool, but it's quite expensive. Hello. I can't click the learn more because the tooltip disappears. That's you have to be really quick. Well, never mind. I won't be turning on the firewall because the Azure uh, WAP Azure pricing is like real. Oh, that's that's a nice feature of Chrome. So it's like the first. Oh, that's it's free for the first couple of terabytes. Well, free is a good offer. Unauthorized. Okay. Australia. Why is this in uh, why is this in a normal color? Settings. I'm not logged in in Chrome. Yeah, because I I don't use Chrome uh, much, so I'm not logged in over here. But I would expect to be able to change it. Search settings. No, no. Okay, I will log in later on. So the pricing, oh, this is Dutch, but it doesn't matter. Pricing is what regional, small. So the data processing is free. Type basic. Hmm. I don't need it now. DDoS protection, well, the basic is good enough for my use case at the moment. I'm not doing any tagging. Let's see if this works. If you want some background music, let me know. Last time I got the comment, it was annoying to have the background music, so I stopped using it. I download the template. So this is uh, so. What is the template for your network? Oh, this is something I am able to remember. Copy. Sublime. Uh, I'm white. Sublime. I'm, it's better to use code to have some syntax highlighting. So, language JSON format better. So, I will be able to copy paste this later on. Uh, close, create. As mentioned, probably won't be deploying this via templates today. Um, go to the resource. So it, that's quite fast. And what can I do with this? What can I do with this? So there's nothing inside it yet, which 
makes sense because I've just created it. Subnets, pairings, so service endpoints. So I, I was able to service subnet. So you can select which subnet gets a specific service endpoint. So web. So I wonder if I if I add an app service to this, if I can choose the app service as a specific service endpoint. I might be misunderstanding service endpoints. Connect the devices, none, none. Okay, so this, this looks quite okay. So I, ha I have this conferences. Uh, shall I add this one? To it, so I am using. Um, so, if you saw my last sessions, uh, at the moment I have this secure API. So this this top one is making an HTTP request to the speakers app API. So uh, we're using managed identities and specific roles and stuff like this. So it's, I thought it was quite interesting and and educational for me at least. Uh, so you can watch those uh, those sessions uh, back on, on YouTube. I'll also do a write-up on it on my blog later on uh, when I have time. So I'm so moving this one to the app service might result in not having this one working in a working state anymore. So let's uh, move this one to the, yeah, so this one is safe because it's rather standalone at the moment, not doing anything with it. It's just there, spending resources. <coughs> So, not found. Slash SDI slash web cost. Okay. Is it without the API? Yes, it's without API. So, I, I would have imagined Chrome having a proper JSON, uh, JSON renderer. Probably has, but as I mentioned, I'm not using Chrome a lot, so it might need a plugin or something. But at least the, the, this works. So I'm going to the weather forecast endpoint of my conferences app. But this works, this still works, and I want to see if I can put it in the network so it's probably needs to be in the networking blade it's probably in the documentation so i, I had the documentation open uh, create the virtual network app service stuff restrict access so that's not restricting access so this is what i want i have a uh, network. Oh, is this what I want? So I want these app services. There's a firewall in front of it. So restrictions allow and deny extra restrictions. Okay, so this is for app services which are located somewhere and I'm only allowing traffic from within a specific VNet to my app service. So this is cool and all, but I want my app service to be inside this. And I don't think I will be able to do it with this stuff. 
I'm also not sure if it's supported. I thought it was, but I'm not very sure. So this is creating a VNet with the VMs. Azure services deploy dedicated. So blah 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 blah. Subnets security VM. So why is this focused on VMs? So there's probably a lot of people using them still. Uh, the pass is well more or at least in my opinion better when doing cloud development. So but that's my opinion and I'm pretty sure a lot of people having a lot of VMs don't agree fully with me. Securely access resources available in or through your Azure VNet. So yeah, this is for my app services connecting to resources inside the VNet or through a VNet. Access applications in private networks. Scalable and secure entry point. So this isn't what I was looking for. Well, click here to configure. Uh, learn more. Let's try to learn more. Integrate your app. So I know this is possible with ACE. So app service environment uh, that is already in a VNet and does require the use of VNet integration. But I don't want to use ACE. I want to use regular app services. F to resources in your VNet. Private site access refers to making an app accessible only from a private network. So this is what I want, private access. Or at least this is, I think this is what I want, network features. Private endpoint. Oh. Preview in the US. Or private link. Yeah, this is so this is the private link stuff. Private yeah. Okay, so not what I was looking for. Use cases and features. The private IP. Protect my app. Not shared. Dedicated. Inbound address for your app. Restrict access to your app from a well set access restrictions. App assigned feature app assigned address. So it would be nice to have a link over here to explain something. So outbound, now I need the inbound stuff. So this is the VNet integration app properties. Defining net possible outbound. Number of endpoints, app assigned address, the app assigned address features, offshoot, what 
when you use an app assigned address, your traffic still goes through the same front end traffic. Use case for this feature or two. Hmm. So there's already a uh, I was going to say um, Epsos already has uh, um, a fairly certificate to it with the Azure websites. I was hoping this would suffice. Import, store and key vault. Import, import, automate. Hmm. Hmm. And what if I uh, this? I understand this the access restrictions. I could to configure Fnet integration. So I need to do the Fnet integration with my front end app service, and I want to TLS SSL. Buy certificates through the main and www. Hmm. So I don't want to add uh, an actual domain to this. Custom domains, app service domains. <laughs> Deploy. Oh, let's do this in Firefox because Firefox has my search profile. Deploy app service in Fnet. Is this possible? Integrate networking. Connect, Pnet integration. I don't want to use the integration stuff. Pnet only access using App Gateway. So there's public IP. And where's the app? So that's over here. Yeah, so this is with access restrictions again, or at least that's what I think. Nicely formatted post. Customer deploy app service. So there's an over here. This is the customer Fnet, and there's an app service inside this. So Oh, this is an ace. Okay. And there's subnet with VMs. Okay, so with an with an ace, this is possible. But I thought it was also possible with dedicated subnet. Okay, web apps. Integrate your app with an Azure Function Network. Require standards, so this is the integration.
to the app from the Vnet. To the resources. side access so this is what I want the private side access making <clears throat> You'd think Ah Christos has some post on it in twenty eighteen. Mm, okay, this is a bit of an old fashioned solution, I think. IP restrictions. So, okay. This is stuff which was valid or was the way to go in 2018, I guess. To use service endpoint. Is a VNet that we can apply to the service. So, Christos's post is very useful if I want to use well the access restrictions or or well blocking via IP. And this is quite doable in a couple of minutes, but it, this. It should be easier, or at least I thought having the private site access had to be easier. So maybe on the, the, the top post. Whoa. Private site. Nothing. Private site. No. So maybe if I if I add the uh, the service endpoint for the web over here, so uh, an app service is just a Microsoft.web resource. So add. Let's see. Updating. Dismiss. In the meantime, I'll just search a bit more. Oh, Netherlands. It should be turned off. Maybe this will help. How do I determine the unbound IP address of my app service? Hmm. It's really useful. So it's mentioned in the docs, but private site access, the plans. 2017 Ace again networking related commands 
There's our price. Oh, this is probably using Finet. Hmm. Not what I want. Observe regional virtual network. What what's up with what is this? This is just a normal site, at least I thought. Private site access for functions. Okay, so that's something. It's it's the same platform, so functions or web apps. So this might be useful. Enable private site access with Azure Functions. Cool. So this one will go in my bookmarks, creating a VNet. Private site functions. <coughs> so I have these notes on the other screen, which will help me uh, understanding later on what I was doing and doing a small write-up on the matter. So, okay, I've got this service endpoint connected. So can I do something with it? No, or at least not over here. Appearings, private endpoints. Okay, so this is the private link stuff. So I now have this service endpoint. And now what? Now what? Firewall. Security. Hmm. Okay, uh, maybe I can do something more now. Probably not. No. Configure. Kind of slow. Status.azure.com. There aren't any issues mentioned over here, which doesn't say anything because most of the time the status page is quite slow uh, to refresh the actual status. Ah, there we go. Something is rendering. It's still quite slow. So let's read up on this. Only triggered from within a specific network. Topology. So I have this VNet with, again, probably some access restriction from a VNet. So let's scroll down to see what they're using. Configure Bastion. Yeah, so Bastion is some stepping stone server which you can connect to, to well, which you can log into to connect to a VM uh, inside a private VNet. It's some somewhat of a remote desktop session. So they're deploying the function configure access restrictions. Private site access is enabled by creating an Azure Virtual Network service endpoint between the function app and the specified virtual network. Access restriction are specified via the service endpoint. In this case, let's select the networking. Let's open the network feature status. So this is different from what we are seeing over here. So is there something which looks like this? Within the function app, proceed to platform features tab. 
networking link under the networking header. So this is different to open the network feature. Starting point, front door, configure access restrictions. So in the end, they're here. Select, okay, okay, yeah. Okay, so in the end, they're, the, the UI is a bit different. Let's see if we can deploy a function app. Function app create um, yeah function some function of of me. So no one is using this function name. Let's make it uh, West Europe runtime. So this is uh, hopefully good enough. Um, storage account, yeah. Let's go. Oh, let's make Windows because I read somewhere the Linux networking support for VNet integration isn't uh, what I would want it to be. Uh, so storage account, okay, that's good enough. App insights, no. Form validation failed. Select the runtime. .NET Core 3.1. Review create. Create. So this shouldn't take too long. Let's see if the docs are consistent with, uh, with what's actually on screen. So I'm using the, the consumption mode, so it won't cost me anything, or at least the first couple of million uh, requests won't cost me anything. There should be secure API, so it's quite cluttered now. <clears throat> so this is my new network, which I'll be deploying tomorrow via the ARM template, or at least I hope so. So there's the new function app, platform features, networking. Yes. Yeah, so this is the same screen. Networking header. Net oh, it's, it's called a bit differently. So this is called networking and this is network feature status. Okay. So starting to the point. The starting point to configure front door, the Azure CDN and Azure access restrictions, configured access restrictions. So let's do the same. Uh, configure restrictions. Yeah, so this is the same. Uh, so I would, uh, oh, add rule. Yeah, so add rule, add rule, add rule, blah, blah, blah. So this is the same. Uh, I'll, I'll leave this tab open for the function app. Maybe I want to go to there later on. So access rule. <coughs> okay. <Yeah>. Allow. <coughs> Type feednet. So this is it. Priority. I think it should be 100 or even higher. 
This one doesn't state. Select the add rule. So this one is the allow all, which is the topmost. So backend. Add rule. All traffic from the backend VNet is allowed now, and all other traffic is denied. So that's what I actually wanted to do. I didn't think it would be well. Okay, same. Yeah, I don't want people. Uh, no, no, let's keep this one like it is because I still want to. Uh, access Kudu myself. Yeah, that's what they state over here also. So I still want to go to Kudu or I might want to go to there. Uh, and I don't want to use Bastion and uh, VM for this. So in a normal production environment, you probably want to have some restrictions also on the, the well, the management side. I don't because I want to go there myself without using some kind of stepping stone mechanism. Okay, access the function. So this means my this one probably doesn't work anymore because I'm going through the public internet to this endpoint now. Forbidden. That's what I expected to see. So this is good. This is awesome. This is what I wanted. Or at least what I was trying to do. So no one is able to connect to it now anymore. Only if you go through the, the VNet we have created. Which is my backend VNet. Okay, cool. So this is good. Uh, closing, closing, and I want this service to well integrate with the VNet. Um, yes, probably need to do some coding now. So I I need to have my front end service connect to the conferences. API through the VNet. Uh, I don't have any connection at the moment to this API, so I have to add this. And let's do this at a, a new endpoint. So I have the test backend controller, which I renamed last time. Um, so I have to get info speaker service. Mm -hmm. So, okay, invoke speaker service, generate token. I don't have any managed identity set up for this one yet. So this is also called weather forecast controller. Let's first add a proper controller to this. So. Uh, big count for search controller. So, controller base. Might have been better to. Okay, import. Um, logger. Yeah, I need a logger. Or longer. No. So this is good, and I need an endpoint to get. So, um, the HTTP get public. Well, I'm innumerable. 
compounds uh, get so get all create type and a conference has a string name uh, everything in our world needs an identifier prop uh, ID uh, what does a conference has a location well not anymore because all conferences are virtual now so let's just stick with this <coughs> for now um, and this will return a small list of new conferences mm. R Great. And Francis and admin bomb at new. ID do it, no do it. Whoa, whoa, no, don't do this. Main is, um, well, we have uh, NBC. And uh, what other conferences do we have? We have, a, well, NBC Oslo is a big conference. So now at NBC in Sydney. Sydney. It's also a big conference. That's why is this uh, at range better? No. Sorry. So, okay. Um, and let's add another. Just to be a non NBC. So, Tecorama. Techram is also a big conference for the Netherlands. Okay, so these are big conferences, and once we get them, we should be able to. Um, big conferences controller. Why is this red? Oh, double. Set the startup. Know what I'm doing? Weather forecast, big conference. Okay. Conferences. Okay, cool. This works. So, getting new IDs every time. So, this works as expected. So, I'm removing this one. Can also move this one now and having properties. Big conferences. Okay, cool. That's all there is to it for now. So I don't have any authentication on this like I have on the speaker service. So this is just everyone is able to connect to it if uh, well if deployed correctly so let's uh, commit this where is work there it is so and that's now endpoint conferences Okay, and now I also need to call it uh, test backend. So, mm, should I do it? Well, let, let's just make it, uh, yeah, conferences.
Um, well, whoa, 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 whoa. I'm pressing a lot of buttons. Okay, invoke speaker service. Well, invoke. And I can copy paste most of it. Um, don't need this stuff at the moment. Oh, I do need the SP client. Where is it? Don't need this. Conferences, URL, <clears throat> body. Okay, so this is quite similar. API call details. Yes, that's good. Uh, need the configuration. Um, oh, it's in my uh, it's in my secrets because I don't need to commit this stuff. Um, conferences. The conferences. Mm. Conferences API URL. Also need to deploy this in the ARM template. Uh, oh, uh, speaker API URL. Could be done by con by convention. Uh, probably not filling it over here. No. Well. Okay. So that's over here. That's over here. Mm hmm. And this is locally, so big conferences, was it? Yes, localized big conferences. So I'm pretty sure this will work. Conferences API, is the setting correct? Yes, over here it is. Over here also. Now I need to fill it out in the pipeline. Where's Chrome? And I deploy infrastructure. So there it is. Um, add a new one. It's not allowed. Okay, I'll do it myself. Uh, this is with. I'm specifying it over here because I don't want to push the, the parameter file with, well, my values inside it because it doesn't make sense for anyone else to connect to them. I want my Git repository to be as clean as possible. Okay, save. And the conferences URL. Okay, um, fork. And the conference will help the deployment. Um, 
Oh, I need to save this one and I need to save everything. Yes, so there it is. Test backend, get conferences. Looks okay. Mm. Oh, 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 uh, the, the, this one isn't correct. Generate access token, where is it? The logging line isn't correct. Get conferences. Commit, now let's push it. So it will be deployed and I will be able to test it. I should probably check if all of the steps, yeah, I probably need to enable, enable, save. Okay, so now I'm enabling the deployment of those app services. The build pipeline is running, so this will be taken into account when the 44th deployment will be ran. So this is the access restrictions of the functions. I can close down this one. I wonder if this access restrictions will, uh, will persist after the deployment. Because it probably shouldn't. Probably shouldn't. Um, can I get the export template? So let's let's see how this looks at the moment. I should probably see some kind of an access policy inside this template. This saves me looking up and thinking about the, in the documentation uh, on what values I should be using. I love this export, so lots of stuff can be exported. So access. Allow. So this is IP security restrictions. So where is this located? This is in the properties of the config. So I still have code open. Where is it? Um, inside, side. So that's the conferences, the properties, in the properties I have this, and also for the SCM, use main files. This is inside the properties. Inside authorities, something like this. <clears throat> this is good to know when I want to do this by myself or in my own ARM template tomorrow or whenever I get around to it. This is configured, obviously, and this is stating it shouldn't use the same values for my Kudu site as with my regular site. Explorer is crashing. When doing Windows tab, Explorer crashes once in a while. So all of the windows, or at least the taskbar, is being re-rendered and my machine freezes up a moment. Strange, annoying, but nothing bad happens. So the 44th deployment is happening right now. Uh, 
Ah, we still have the debug on. And I wonder. But I was over here. So close. So let's see. Deploying the infrastructure. So we've set step four. I kind of expect my access restrictions to be reset again. That would be cool because then I can test my new endpoint to see if it works. And by adding the extra restrictions, it won't work. So that would be cool. If not, doesn't matter. This takes a while. <clears throat> this is good. So, my infrastructure has been um, redeployed. Uh, is there somewhere to refresh now? Well, let's go to networking. Configure. Mm, might need to refresh. So it's still there. It's still there. That's not what I expected. Well, I, um, oh, yeah, expected isn't the correct word. I thought it would reset just to have this, this environment in the desired state of my ARM template, but seeing they are not. This isn't uh, deleted. I can also understand it. Why it isn't deleted, or I, I think I understand it because this is network infrastructure has something. Uh, yeah. No, no. And maybe because this is a resource living outside my app service. That's why it's persists over deployments still strange because you have to specify it in the arm template of the configuration of your site and if it persists after a deployment then your arm template isn't the desired state anymore of your app service that's strange still uh, Okay, so deploying conferences. So the new endpoint with the big conferences will be deployed right now. Weather forecast should be gone. And this is the big conferences now. But I also have so this is the secure API. This is the conferences networking page and this is the secure api so the back end for front end yeah. let's go to this site and i have this um what was the endpoint called my new one slash conference well slash conferences so here i go for cost or that's the one I have or also renamed it already test backend test backend so this one is doing something and I'm getting well what I expect no this isn't Polish I'm making it a bit bigger so this is the endpoint which is connecting to my speaker API and it gets some weather forecast. So is the deployment done? Well, it's swapping to production. It should be done in any minute now. And then we can check if this new endpoint fails. So this one should fail. Well, it doesn't exist at the moment because it's still swapping. 
it shouldn't well it should give a error 500 or no it, it probably gives a what do I expect it to be response response there's not a try catch but I expect um, a body with a forbidden states code forbidden and the reason phrase I'm not allowed in or something similar Sure, it takes its time. Oh, it did something. It succeeded. That's what I want. So this endpoint should exist now or not. Apparently not. Secure API, blah, 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 404. Okay. Maybe I should have checked it before. Um, that's annoying. Oh, sure. Um, test backend slash. Okay, so that's yeah. I, and to add the controller, that's the backend slash conferences. Okay, that's not what I asked. Did I make a typo? Error 500. So, not what I expected. Oh, just uh, let me check if all of the app settings have been deployed correctly. So there's the conferences API URL. It's not here yet. Refresh, continue. That's because it did a swap slot. So it's probably, no, it should be here. It should be here. So let me check the pipeline and the pipeline. Deploy infrastructure. Speaker API URL. Conferences API URL. So it should be. Should have been here. Should have been here. Let's check the deployment, uh, the, the staging slot. Conference API. So it, it is here on the staging slot. So there's something copy. copy. Something fishy with the deployment configuration. <coughs> I'll add it by hand. Yeah, stupid. Um, over here, and it's this one. Okay, save. And that probably fixes my 500. Server is available. Refreshing, heart refreshing. Getting up. Almost done. Looks like I'm getting a timeout. So this one is still forbidden. 
So I would have expected this one to have, ah, there it is. Access token, no, reason forbidden. IP is forbidden. That's actually correct. So now, now I'll add the VNet integration. So adding this, this secure API uh, service. So the service which is doing the actual get to the backend and integrate it with the backend VNet, which uh, and this backend, this conferences API has an access restriction only network traffic from the VNet, the backend VNet, or passed through the backend VNet is allowed to connect to it. So VNet integration, connect, add VNet. No VNet, well, this one, select existing, this one. Okay, so it's there. I think there might still be one issue is, well, well, no, no, no. I was thinking about the host name because the net, I want to go to this conferences API, which is a public C name. And I need to route my traffic through the VNet now. Would this work? I don't know. Let's find out. So refresh. Yes, we still have, we still have integration with this subnet. Let's see. Still IP forbidden. It's blocked your access. Probably needs a different endpoint. Probably need a different endpoint, but what would it be? So, some properties plate with uh, how to connect to this configure source, but this one doesn't state anything. Rules. Okay. This might also be Chrome caching. Uh, let's pick a different browser. So it's taking a long time on both Chrome and Firefox. Still doesn't bode well. So, but I have this integration in place now. Maybe there's some... <coughs> wow, it works. Yes, it works in Firefox. And it also works in Chrome now. So it takes a minute to, to refresh. So now what I, what I have now is what I want. So, do I have Physio? No, I don't have Physio. Draw? No, I don't have. So, I have one. Let's do it in Visual Studio. So, I have this secure API.API project, which is public available to everyone in the whole world. And I have this secureapi.conferences, which is deployed to an app service, which has an access policy to it, that only connections coming from my backend VNet are allowed to it. And I can still use the public C name of this, this web application. Uh, and if my other app service is integrated with this VNet, I can connect to it using the public, uh, the, the public uh, C name. That's quite cool. 
hope this works yes yes so success finally a, a streaming session with success and i did what i wanted to do let's see how the the template looks so export template there's probably something for integrating with a vnet i don't think it should be too hard Uh, I integrated. Okay. Network. So, virtual network connections. Mm -hmm. This is probably the part I need. So, let's copy it to code. Uh, where is it? In the the secure API dot API template. Where is it? This is in the website. This is a sp um, its own resource. Uh, it's in the resources of the app service, I think. Lots and lots. Oh, all the deployments are here also. Annoying. I'm following the line. Oh no, it's just a resource on the highest level. Okay. So, network. Is there something more? No, that's, that's it. External ID. So, this is the Yes, the resource ID of the of the network, but I'm going to deploy this in one big massive template. So this is this I can get with the resource ID uh, function. So that's it uh, for today. We have success, or I've had success with uh, with creating uh, an API in a VNet and connecting to it through a VNet. So tune in tomorrow again, because then I'm gonna deploy the stuff using ARM templates in order to make, well, everything more repeatable and secure. So uh, thank you all for watching. And if you have any questions or suggestions what I should improve, please let me know in chat or somewhere else. Thank you all for watching and uh, stay safe, stay healthy.